Okay, for this tutorial, what I want to do is show you the object path outline stroke menu item and why you should use it. I'm going to create just a simple web icon, but before I do that, uh, I want to explain why you should always outline the strokes. Uh, so in this case, let's say I'm going to make just kind of a simple no smoking sign type graphic like that where the object looks like that but the thickness of those lines are based off of a stroke so if I go into the outline mode it's just a single line with a really heavy stroke uh, which you know it looks fine just like that uh, but the problem is if you send this to someone so you're going to send it to someone and they're going to make a huge poster or a huge banner out of this. And depending on what their preferences are set at, if they do not have scale strokes and effects checked, then they take that and they blow it up really big like that. You see the stroke doesn't shrink down or it doesn't blow up. So it looks really thin and it completely changes the look of the artwork. Now, if someone had that preference checked, like that, then if I select that and blow it up, it should look normal. But since you don't know what their preferences are set at, instead of risking it, what you do instead is, rather than leave those as a single line with a heavy stroke, you go into Object, Path, Outline, Stroke. And what that'll do is turn each of those lines that I created into a double line. And then, actually in this case, it's a circle with a hole knocked out of it. So it's a compound path. And then here it just basically outlined it so it's a rectangle. And I could finish that up by just doing the uh, pathfinder and joining them together. And now no matter what their preferences are set at, when I blow that up or shrink it down, it's going to look exactly how I intended. So now that I've got that out of the way, I'm going to show you just a simple web icon. And I'm going to start with a circle. And I'm going to put that heavy stroke on it until it looks about how I want it to look. So about like that. Uh, and then I'll add just whatever color I want to that, like that. Okay, about right there. All right, and then I'm going to just create like a little mouse icon. So I'm going to do a couple things here. I'm just going to create a circle, drag a copy of that down. But while, while holding the option key down, so it makes a duplicate. And then I'm just going to delete each half like that. And then I'll select a point up here. Shift click the point right here. And I'll just hit Command J to join them. Or if you forget the shortcut, go into Object, Path, Join. And it will just shoot a line connecting two points. Okay, so I've got just kind of the simple mouse shape there. And then another advantage of the outline stroke is let's say I want to have a little cut in here on this mouse icon. If I want to use the pathfinder for that, so I kind of thicken that up a little bit. And I want to cut this shape out of the mouse silhouette here. Uh, if I try to do that now with the subtract okay, it tries to cut off the whole top part of the mouse because it considers this just one single shape but instead if I select this circle and I do the object path outline stroke it'll make it a compound shape which means I can then select both the body of the mouse and the compound shape and hit the subtract and it will do that. Actually, I'm going to undo that really quick. I'm going to just grab this shape so I don't have to create a new one. 
And I'm just going to use the overall shape I made just to create a little uh, mouse wheel for my icon. So I'll drag that up like that. Bring it to the front. Okay. And then uh, the other advantage, the outline stroke, is if you're trying to make something like if you're doing a technical illustration and you're trying to make a wire coming out of something. If you've ever tried to draw something like a wire and you try to draw one side of it and then come back down and draw the other side, it never ends up even. Now granted this is a little bit of an exaggeration here, but see how it's all wobbly and uneven because it's really difficult to go back down the other side and keep the exact same thickness. But if you use the outline stroke, then all you really have to do is create one single line like that and then just add whatever thickness you want to it. Oops, get a different color here. Okay, so add whatever thickness you want to that. Just make sure that you're happy with however thick this line is because once you do the outline stroke, you're kind of stuck with it. Okay, so let's say I'm happy with that. Now if I just go into Object, Path, and Outline Stroke, it'll turn that into a double line. And the other nice thing is you can also select... Oops, i got to do that with this too. Forgot to make the outside circle a double line, so I'll do the path, outline stroke. And I could select all of this stuff and just do an add pathfinder. Let me do that in the outline mode so you can kind of see. See, so I have these overlapping shapes. And you always want to clean up your logos as best as possible. So do the pathfinder, the add pathfinder, and it just joins them so that's one nice, neat looking shape. However, whenever you create a new, or do a pathfinder, it sort of creates a new grouping and it brings it to the front. So I lost that little circle there. So if I just do uh, ascend to back, I should get that back. All right, and then the last step, I'm just going to draw a circle within here. Send it to the back. And I'm just going to fill it with a slightly lighter orange color. If I want to keep that same overall hue, uh, if I hold down the shift key and drag the color slider, they will all move together. So I can just kind of lighten that orange color. Like that. Alright, and then just to give it the that final touch here, uh, big trend nowadays is doing these glossy type logos. So I will kind of create a circle about like that where I want this shininess to be. And then if I select all of that stuff, do the divide pathfinder, uh, you will have to get rid of this circle that you made, this one right here. Get rid of that. And then otherwise, I'm just going to take my direct select tool and just click on all the uh, orange parts in this portion up, up here. And I'll hold down the shift key again as I drag the color slider. So that will keep those all the same hue. And then I'll select this piece inside here and do the same thing. Just shift drag those color sliders to lighten that up a little bit and then you end up with something that looks like that.